we're doing, uh, we're taking the time to recognize that um, that um, we're not here because of ourselves. Amen. We're not here just because we thought we got saved and the Lord called us and he just imparted, imparted in us all knowledge and all truth and so therefore we got it going on and those old timers, they just, ugh, how could they do this? Oh, ugh, how could they, where did they find a pound metal at? Uh, there's a foundation for us and as we sift through those things that become the foundation, God's church is built on uh, nothing less but uh, Jesus' blood and his righteousness yes. to recognize that there were those who were faithful. Right. There were those who labored so that we can experience, so that we can possess what we now possess and what are we going to do with it. And so as we think about building on the foundation, what are we going to do with it? Are we going to say, well, I served my time. That's on y'all, whatever y'all want to do. And so this is to help us to consider what are we responsible for? Yeah. What are we going to do? What are we passing down to the generations that's following? And so we're taking the time each service to honor some trailblazers who with vision and faithfulness serve the Lord and honor him with their faithfulness. And so we celebrate them, uh, even on this side of eternity, to recognize the goodness and the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we take the time tonight to recognize some of the saints that are here with us and have given themselves uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. I, and, and to the service here at the campgrounds in Palmetto, who saw the vision, who bought into it, who... Uh, work to fulfill right. and with all of their strength they gave them to the Lord I want to call first of all to join me here uh, is uh, Brother Henry Matthews Brother Henry if you would come and uh, to join me Brother Henry uh, Matthews um, I want to say Faith Chapel Church of God but um, how do you say that grew up on the Dodie Road <laughs> grew up on the Dodie Road <laughs> <laughs> and I learned, I got to wait until tomorrow night, but I, I learned about, you know anything about the blue hole? The blue hole is Okay, we're going to find out a little bit more about the blue hole tomorrow night. Okay, we're right. we, okay, we going we gonna to get all that. But Brother Henry Matthews, through the years, whatever needed to be done, he availed himself. If it was work day, Brother Matthews was on the hand. He was finding something to do. What can I do? And, and whatever he found to do, he would do it. And then those times that some of you know, Brother, Brother Henry would show up someplace he wasn't looking for whatever and talk about what if, what can be done, what, what if this could take place, what about this, and to avail his service, never looking for the glitz and the glamour, never looking for the credit, but was faithful with what the Lord has blessed him with. And we're so uh, blessed indeed that we get to honor you, Brother Henry, and say thank you. Amen. Thank you for your service to the campgrounds here, to the work of the Church of God in Louisiana. And uh, even as you worked alongside of Pastor J.D. Brown, I heard about some of the drives y'all would take. And again, being a visionary, Brother Henry would say, what if, what, what if? We look out there and we see nothing. But if we see a field. Brother Henry sees something else out there. And so even to have that conversation. And when you talk about being faithful, Brother Henry, I remember you talked about a conversation. Brother Henry also served on the board of Bay Ridge Christian College. And you told, the story was, you were on the board and you went for Reverend Brown to Kittles in Texas. And you got in his car and you went to put your luggage in the trunk. And there were nothing but spare tires in the trunk and there were no place for your And by the time y'all made it back to Baton Rouge, y'all had used all of those spare tires. And from then on, I'm told, they went to Kendall to get Brother Henry's car. <laughs> so what a blessing to be. Before we, we make the, the, the presentation and invite your family to join us in some pictures, 
want you to share just a word of encouragement to the body of Christ. As you look at your time of service and you look at uh, the work of the church here on the grounds throughout Louisiana, what are some words of encouragement you want to share with the body? I want to do this. One of the things I want to do is that I would have the course to make to accept the presentation. And I wrote something down, so I would be so loved. I can't be out drinking honey and tea, and it didn't stop this whole thing. So let me just let you know how I felt before I got here. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I am incredibly honored and grateful to be standing here this evening to be recognized for the con contribution I contributed to God's ministry over the years. It is truly a humbling ex experience to receive a recognition for something that I also always have a personal uh, feeling for, and that is God's work, God's grounds, and God's uh, buildings. Lastly, I won't keep you long. <laughs> Second to lastly. <laughs> but not least for the last one. I would like to stress and to express my gratitude to the selection committee who chose me for this recognition event. Also, I would be remiss if I didn't say and didn't recognize my family who has supported me, who supposed me so dearly, who came from aid me from several places to be here to see the grandfather. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, Brother Matthews, on behalf of the Ministry and Retreat Center here, um, we talk about building on the foundation. The foundation is something that you, st that you stand on. What I'm standing on tonight, Brother Matthews made possible. The floor you're looking at, just saying, just saying. But uh, our first annual Trailblazer Award. And so we want to present you with this Trailblazer Award honoring you on the, this July the 12th, 2024. Okay, I no longer need to be secretary 
of the assembly. So for years and years, and Brother Gene kept perfect minutes. If he if, if something was said, look, I'll make sure I get this down. And Gene would stop us in the middle of a meeting. I want to get this down. And so just the details and the preciseness uh, of the work that he did in giving himself to the grounds, we are appreciative. And boy, every time there needed to be a class to be taught during camp meeting, Cassandra's name was called, and she would serve so faithful. Uh, in, uh, in the Christian ed piece and with working with our children and just an extension of the ministry she had at Faith Chapel. She brought it here. Never was one uh, to complain about anything, but wherever she could fill in. And we talk about building on a foundation. Yes. And those of us that follow uh, the Rosbys recognize that, again, the standard has been set. What are we going to do with that? And so, Brother Gene, we just said, Sister Cassandra, we want to say thank you for your service. It's not over. It's not over now. It's not over. But as you find things into areas of service, it, it, it's very important that that legacy continues. But we uh, are so appreciative of that. And if you have anything you want to share with the, uh, with the church tonight, a word of encouragement, and to those of us who are following you, we would welcome you to share. Hey, Tommy, I'm going to get about uh, as a secretary. Uh, well, one of the most challenging things that I had to do was to uh, record the layman recommendations. And people from the audience would, would, would present them, and I would write them down. And, come back to following you, I didn't say that. <laughs> so what I did is that I said, what I'll do is have them to write it down. So the following year, and they would write it down, well, I said, that, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> so anyway, I thank God for, for giving me uh, some talent to, to record, and, and, and I did the best I can. The best I could, but, you know, I was thinking last night, if, if I had to identify a song that I really love, is uh, Our Best. You don't know that song? Yes. Let me remind you, we don't sing those songs anymore. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me say, uh, Hear the master call, give me thy best. Forget great or small, that is his test. Do then the best you can, not for reward, nor for the praise of men, but for the Lord. And every day that I undertake, I do my very best. In fact, I told my children when they were growing up, I said, you know, if you do your best, I'm going to pay with it. But don't tell me you're doing your best, and I see that you're not standing because to me, that's not your best. But if they did their best, and I'm okay with it. So whatever undertaking I decide to undertake, I'm doing my very best. Some of us not going to do it. I thank God for how he's blessed us and how... We were, were able to build on the foundation those who were before us. Think about uh, brothers, Brother Reverend Burns, uh, yeah. Pastor J.D. Brown, uh, yeah. Brother Hunter Funk, and we're going on. We kind of sit on their shoulders because we didn't do anything. But we, we sought to carry on the work that they had started. And I'm hoping that, that uh, those who follow us can do the same thing. Yeah. I thank God for his goodness. I was not always saved, but once I decided to, to become a Christian, I'm serious about it. I'm doing the very best I can. So what I say to you is that don't have to do anything. Do the very best you can, not for the war, not for the praise of men, but for the Lord. Amen. I want to be able to hear him say that. Well, right. Pray for us as we continue to to go on the road. I'm going to the master realtor now. What was your career before real estate? I have done a number of things. Raise children. That's probably the biggest thing. We've had four kids, and I have done the various things. I've done all the things that you can imagine. And I want to relay that to the children that I work with at Camp Brown. So what if I did? And I was a teacher. Educator. I thought about being yeah. an educator. Okay. Okay. All right. And you have some family that's here. We're going to invite them to come and we're going to take pictures. Uh, Brother Gene, master social worker, the state of Louisiana.
um, has looked up to him and a lot of his uh, efforts and his work. And uh, we're just proud of his, uh, not just his uh, legacy working in the church, but uh, being a citizen of the kingdom of God. So Brother Gene, we want to present this to you. Just 
to keep on working and I just love the Lord and all these fine people from Palmetto Church of God they have given me such a warm welcome to keep coming back. You know, you if you keep coming back, you must love a place. <laughs> if you stop coming, something wrong somewhere. <laughs> so I just thank the Lord and I just give him all the glory. Amen. for your service to uh, the campgrounds here in Palmetto, the Ministry Retreat Center. We want to present you with this Trailblazer Award, uh, honoring you here this July 2024. God bless you.
To God be the glory of great things he has done. Amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Building on the foundation. We're going to build on something. We're going to try an old one. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. I was not convinced. Let's try that one more time as y'all begin to join us. In worshiping the one true God, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Glory to God. Amen. Please join us in worship as we worship our Savior today.
say, Lord God, we love you. We say, bless you in your name today, Lord God. Lord God, we love you. We bless your name in this house today, Lord. We say, glory, glory, glory is your name. Blessed be your name, Lord.
Worthy of every song I could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. Nor is there anyone beside you. I open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart.
Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Oh, God. 
God speaking to me in the middle of the night, but I did not understand that it was God. Do you understand what I'm saying? I thought, well, one day when I grow up, I'm going to write songs. Mm. I love music. I mm. love worship. We could have just went on all night. I told Brother Dale earlier, you just all want to fly home. <laughs> when you get caught up in the spirit, you just fly home to the house. Right. <laughs> and then one night, I heard the Lord say, I have something for you to do. And I said, okay. And then my dad became the pastor in Shelbyville, Tennessee. That is probably one of my favorite churches ever. Mm. We lived in a very luxurious parsonage. <laughs> Come on, everybody. If you're a PK, you mm. probably know what I'm talking about. My, my, my. They had the best floors in this house. <laughs> they had the best windows in this house, Brother Dale. Mm. I am not kidding you. It was so fabulous that when it snowed in the hills of Tennessee, the snow would come right in the house. <laughs> it was fabulous. <laughs> We thought it was the best thing ever. You did, baby. Every room in the house was wide open. There was no privacy at all. So, Mom and Dad said, we're going to hang sheets so that we can have privacy. I'm not kidding you. Hold on. I have to get down here on the floor. I don't really like platforms. They aggravate me. So then... We sat down at the wonderful table to eat dinner on a slant. <laughs> I'm not joking. But you know, as a girl, as I think back, wow, what I would go, what I would do right now to go back to that. Because in that little house, is where God started calling my name. He started saying, Sarah, I want you to do things for me. You see, I didn't understand because I was young, but I didn't let that hinder me because I knew that God was speaking to me. Praise God. Praise God. You see, in that little church, when my dad was in his office, I would go up to that rickety pulpit <laughs> that he would bang on on a regular basis. <laughs> and he would be in the back of the church and I would be in the sanctuary. I don't even know if I could see over the pulpit, Sister Deidre. All I know is I wanted to bang on the pulpit and I wanted people to hear about Jesus. You see, I didn't realize then what he was doing. All right. He was building the foundation of my life. Yes. You see, there was a man named Reverend I.B. Tucker. He was a Church of God pastor, retired, and he lived across the street in a very grand home. Okay. And I'm not joking. No. I would look out the window and say, man, look at that mansion over there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's beautiful. That's what I would think as a kid. He would mentor my dad and I would listen to the wisdom that he was giving to my father. Not even, I don't even think they were even realizing that I was even in the room. But I would hear what he was saying.